and welcome to All My Art and Soul. Uh, I'm Michelle Holden, the mixed media artist behind this channel, and this week is all about uh, exploring bold color. So as you can see, uh, I've mentioned before in some other videos that after I finish painting and I have a whole bunch of paint as you, uh, on the palette, I just sort of turn to the next page and start rolling some bold color on just to activate uh, the very first layer. And uh, so that's what I've done for this week. And um, so I've been exploring uh, color and how to build up different layers, different marks. Um, of course, drawing some layers in between. And then that there was the uh, newsprint paper that I cut small so when I roll my brayer after I'm done um, I can get some really interesting collage papers just made automatically no effort at all so I'm um, sticking to the horizontal areas of color uh, just for this first activation and I'm using my favorite combinations uh, to start with in this first layer but um, you will see, if you stay to the end, that um, I am dealing with a very bold color that I never use. And um, that color is purple or violet. So, um, so the next layer that I did here was just a white. And it's thin because I've uh, spritzed it with a little bit of water and used my uh, wedge to spread out the white, but I only wanted to uh, leave a little bit of that bold color behind. Just adding drips of black, pushing down lightly with the paper, and then rotating it to get those marks very natural um, uh, on the rest, on the bottom. Now, in looking at this video now, um, I will learn for the next one that I will only do this maybe in half or third or a third of the area, just maintaining some of that difference in the sections. Um, seeing that I did it all over, um, covered up some of that upper white, with, which is over the color that I wish I showed more of. But stick to the end of the video, as I said, and you'll see what, what ends up happening. Uh, this is just something to remember for the next journal page. There's always another one. And this blue that I'm using here, along with the matte medium, is your ultramarine. Um, I like it along with uh, Payne's Gray, but if you've used ultramarine, it's pretty powerful. And so to lift some more, to get, to get a thin layer, I'm just spritzing it with a little bit of water and removing some with my wedge and then also with the newsprint paper on the left, which is very absorbent. Now below where the water and acrylic paint has dripped down, it sort of bled through the blue tape. So in the future, I will put a layer of clear medium after you've put the tape down and just tape it along your edges and then none of that goes through and you have a very crisp edge at the end when you lift the tape. So as you can see, I'm looking, I'm dabbing the newsprint paper. I really like it because it's very absorbent compared to just copy paper. And you can see some of the different layers. Okay, so that was behind the scenes as to where I started this page and how I led to getting all those um, layers of activation on, on this page. And then after you've started some layers, um, you might want to start with pastels. So I'm gonna put some marks of pastels and then go into your collage layers after that. I know that some other artists start with collage right away. Um, and I might try that. So I've got uh, a lot of cool colors. That one is a uh, alizarin crimson, or it might be a cadmium red deep, I'm not sure. There's more of that 
ultramarine blue, the Titan buff, and then a turquoise. And I'm showing you the tools that I'm using here. And um, there's my, that's my new coffee mug, which I love, and I just love the color of it. Those two colors, I think, would really create it, but that doesn't end up happening on this particular page, but it's going to be on the next one. So just lying, uh, laying out some colors, trying to get organized, and just, just thinking about, okay, well, what might I start with? And I know that I start with these pastels, so I've got a purple, white, red, a blue, and a green. And I'm starting to get to like green with the blue just because it makes some of the other blues more blue, sort of a, a contrast in the color. That was a piece that I made uh, a while ago, really bright and colorful. I just haven't figured out how or where I'm going to use it yet. And that's a very, it's a, that's one of the larger palette knives that you've seen uh, in the art store. And so I'm just activating any marks. Um, I'm thinking vertical because there's a lot of horizontal and along, you know, a lot of spontaneous marking here. So I'm trying, I'm thinking of pushing those black layers back while putting these pastel marks on top, which are gonna end up being covered anyway, but will add texture if they peek through. And I'm liking what I'm seeing now because uh, the pink or the lighter value, whatever that might be, and I could have used orange, uh, even white, really push that black behind, which ends up being almost covered but you sense it's there. So when we're doing this, we're adding some really nice history to our pages along with texture. And putting a little bit more pastel on. And I don't know about you, but I really love um, just letting go, uh, getting those lines going. And in the future, I am going to experiment with some more, you know, changing up the pastel lines, maybe using shapes. Um, and while I was doing this with the China marker, I noticed how different it was. It stuck to the page more, just a little bit more wax going on, where, of course, an oil pastel is, is an oil. So now I'm just starting to get bold. And this is where the title of this week's video is. So it's just bold. Um, that's a beautiful fuchsia pink and I'm adding some blue to it as you can see and just changing the color and don't know so I'm just going crazy with the thing so uh, some of those marks were very tight and small so I'm thinking of just well let's cover a section with pink and let's go for it um, so this middle stage, to me, it might not, you know, everybody has a different perspective, is the real ugly stage. And sitting back and looking at it now, it's like, wow, what are you going to do with this thing? What can I do? Where am I going to go next? And I know a lot of you and, <laughs> and, uh, and myself have been stuck and we would have just stopped at this point. Well, just keep going. And I find in your mind, if you just go, well, it's just another layer. So let's see if I put something on top. Maybe you could repeat some of the colors below and overlap. And I'm learning that some of the artists that I follow, um, that's what they're doing and how they're creating these in and out and overlapping areas of, of similar color. It's so cool. So what do you do? And that's what I was thinking. Well, let's add a little bit more blue, put a little bit of Titan buff in it, which will make it a little bit more opaque and cover and good for covering. Just, you put a layer down, you see what you like. If you don't like, maybe keep just a little bit and cover up the rest. Well, what do you cover it up with? 
How do you hide that layer? These are the questions that I'm still exploring. Um, if I'm covering it up, am I just mass, massively just covering it up with a great big scribble? Or am I covering it up with particular shapes? You know, it just doesn't matter. Um, and again, and I know I've mentioned Nicholas Wilton. I just finished watching another video of his. And that's what I will do. I will pick something from an artist. It could be Louise Fletcher. It could be Adele Sipenston. Uh, or anyone. And I'll say, and I'll pick an element that I like. And I will then try it in my own way. So this is uh, creative discernment. And as you can see, some of those pages, those collage pieces that I've, that I've made earlier, they echo the same color. And um, that could have been a whole other direction that you could go or that I could have chosen. It was similar color, but it's just distorted a bit because it's a collage paper. It's just something different. So now I... I'm pleased with how I covered up most of that pink and I'm laying down, uh, this is the tracing paper uh, created just with stenciling um, using uh, the stencils that I, uh, the stencil girl stencils that I, that I used. And notice I just changed the blue. I just, okay, I just don't want the same old blue dots. Uh, and I've been trying to find some of that really nice paper. Uh, and if some of you know where to get these, um, decorative papers with dots, the white with red dot, I just love using even just a tiny piece in an abstract, uh, black and white or black dotted paper. Um, I put a comment below and then we can share some of this information. And I know that some, some of you have... Um, hit on my Facebook page that I just activated at this point. And this weekend, I'm in the middle of getting it all set up properly where we and I can all share our abstract journaling pages. So I cannot wait to get that um, full steam ahead. So back to the video. As you can see, I really love echoing um, the previous layer but in, a, but in a different way. So it just uh, repetition and uh, with a different shape and of course overlapping. And this piece, I've been, you may, you may have seen me put it down in other, other videos. It's such the most beautiful purpley blue and I just, I'm just using it as a color element. And it's, uh, I do believe, National Geographic magazine, where they have all of those amazing colorful pictures of landscapes from different parts of the world. Tracing paper again. Um, very thin. And I love the delicateness of this type of collage. So as you see, I'm just moving it around. I do end up using it, so stick around to the end, um, but more centrally. And it's similar to Of Earth and Sky, but not quite. And I know that's in the back of my mind. I'm trying to stay away from that, but sometimes it just you just gotta do what you gotta do. So adding some white to that teal and just putting in a shape Starting with a squarish shape, but it just it didn't do it, so you just expand that color. Doing some lifting, and then in the meantime, getting a really cool piece of collage paper created. It looks good, the dots, but then too much the same. So there's too many dots, and this piece looks really nice. It is a piece of tracing paper, which is a little more waxy. Um... I don't know if I end up using that or not. Now, I really like these stickers, these numbers and letters. So sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. And I was planning on using them as, um, as a resist. So it would be in the shape of that number or letter, but you would still see what's there. 
So I grab this uh, circle within a square, um, packing material, you know, interesting packing material sounds really, uh, is really cool. And I just thought, okay, I'm just gonna add a layer of this, these shapes in a grid. And I'm really, I might not like the color combination at this time, but I'm really liking how it's pushing that other layer behind. So the bold pink is getting reduced as we pile or lie more layers on top. So again, some more stencil girl stencils. And I'm not thinking of anything in particular. I thought white um, and just using that makeup sponge, which I'm really liking. Um, they're very dense and they don't soak up a ton of paint, but um, they're very smooth and leave help leave crisp edges for your stenciling as long as you're not using any or too much water. So just, so now that blue and pink is becoming more of a background and less important. And yes, I'm thinking, making this grid, maybe go on a cruciform type of uh, composition. Not sure at this point. I'm still sending those layers back by adding some more on. And yes, this particular page does end up getting pretty busy, but I think um, I alleviate that issue near the end by um, unifying the layers with a very transparent um, layer uh, of two different blues. So if you're interested in how I see that, how I... Um, solve that issue, stick to the end. And this is just, remember, this is just a good, a good place. It, you know, so I wreck it. I'm still going to put it on my video. I may or may not, depending, <laughs> because, you know, but I want to be authentic and uh, show you how you can, okay, nothing is a waste of time. Yes, it might need to sit for a while until you see it in a different perspective, and that usually happens when you go and work on something else. You learn something from that particular piece or process, whatever you're working on, and you go, oh, and then you go back to whatever's lying around waiting in your studio. And I believe me, I have a lot. And that's just, uh, that's just how it has to be. Now, I really love how thin this collage uh, paper is. It still, it has more strength than the tracing paper, but it's still transparent and you can see the pink underneath. So I'm going to ex do some more exploration with uh, that particular effect. So my foam circles, I just love how easy these go down and I really like the texture that it makes. Rather than a cup edge that's thin, um, I like the thickness of these and how each one is different. And so I'll make a couple of passes with these particular circles and again, thinking odd numbers. Four, five. Well, maybe not this time. Maybe it's six. It doesn't really matter. And then I use more of the Titan buff. There's that orange again. I keep trying to trying to find so that made me think of okay maybe not an orange piece of paper which is way too bold let's use some orange pastel and I always love to put orange where the pink is I just love those two colors how they work together okay and uh, pardon the um, that white that bright part in the video right now that shows up every once in a while with all our rain that we're getting here, the sun came out and it was so nice. And um, when I started the video, uh, it was not sunny, so I did not need to uh, put my blind down, but I eventually 
did get up there and put that down after noticing that it was a, a glary part in the video. But it's so nice to get the sunlight and my studio lights on this because it just brightens it up in such a nice way. So yes, the makeup sponge with the black. Um, I'm still looking for um, larger letter and number stencils. I went looking in Michael's the other day and uh, yes, they have the individual um, cardboard ones, but as I've said before, they're not, they, they, they tend to tear. And I just like a whole row sometimes, it's easy. So I'm still making those, so I'm deciding, no, I don't wanna do it in order. There's a, just a particular letter that I wanna fit in there for different reasons. Everybody has their reasons. Sometimes I say my numbers don't mean anything, but most of the time they do. I like to use the number eight because of its meaning and relation to uh, infinity, uh, to also um, gematria, different meanings of numbers. Everything has a different meaning and a different frequency. So number eight really resonates with me. So I decided to, okay, let's put some more in. Let's go somewhere in between. And I have done uh, larger pieces with a whole background, just with overlapping letters and overlapping numbers. And um, it's interesting. I think it still would have been better if the numbers were larger and a little bit thicker, just to show that that bigger difference between what's already on uh, the layers below. And especially in black. So I'll keep that in mind for another art journaling page. So now that the page is starting to get some structure. Sometimes um, your pages will just find structure right away and they'll just be the fastest, amazing things other times, we've got to work and struggle through these layers. Yes, my wonderful cardboard, and it just gets better with more paint that's building on it. Now, that one didn't turn out so well, just because I probably had a little bit too much water on my brush, but the marks are just natural. I'm trying to find that orange again. <laughs> it's so hilarious. So... I'm noticing when I put that violet or that deep purple piece uh, anywhere on this page that it creates a sense of calm because it's solid compared to, as you can see, all the busyness going on in the background. But I do alleviate that coming up very soon. So I decided just to put that in the lower left-hand corner while leaving that pink vertical mark showing. It just felt right. And yes, using the fingers. I love that feel of paint. And that ends up not showing so much and there's my sunshine again. <laughs> I thought at this point I uh, figured out to close the blind, but apparently not. So there, um, this paper, I loved it. The, I didn't realize it had metallic little pieces inside of it. So I'm really loving that. And I just decided to, to use it just in squares, small squares, and just put them randomly around on top of the letters, just pushing those letters back a little bit more or that horizontal area of black shapes, which happen to be letters.
And I think again, I think there's about seven there. Now I really like the uh, negative space of those circles up at the top with the blue and then those those zigzaggy vertical lines that I've put in. So looking at that and how they're contrasting with the row of light circles going across, it's pretty cool. So I love my stripes on this paper. So I decided to cut this piece, but once it was there, it was just too busy, way too busy. And, um, So then I've decided, like I made uh, this stencil just out of paper. You can use copy paper, any kind of paper, just to put some shapes in. Um, so I chose this beautiful teal and it is just adding some solid shapes just to calm down things. And I do apologize about that sunshine. I hate to apologize about sunshine. Uh, it's, it was so nice having that sun in. And that's what happens. I got into my work and I didn't realize <laughs> for the video it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the greatest. But it'll go away in a bit. So just uh, hang in there. Stay to the end. <laughs> and I know that this, I do believe this is my one of my longest videos that I've created for this particular series. It's about 36 minutes long. Um, I notice the more I get into them, the longer they are. But I, I don't really want to go too much longer but if you're enjoying this content, uh, and if you like the length of this video with all the more layering, um, different techniques, and how I put the layers down, please leave a comment below and let me know. And if there's anything that you'd like me to demonstrate, uh, also leave a comment about that. So there's that little aluminum pipe and I also love the shapes that it makes here. So putting that uh, transparent piece of collage paper in the upper left-hand corner made me think of, okay, let's put some more circles, but in a different size. Putting the black dots in the bottom uh, and then some black areas, calming down that bottom area and giving some weight to it, anchoring it down. And as you can see now, more of that cruciform uh, composition is starting to show up. I love my row of circles across there, those six circles. And they really show up in the end. So I'm just, uh, before I'm choosing another color, uh, if, if you're going to do it quickly, I'm just making sure I don't get orange lines instead of the color that I want to choose, which is black. And I really love the black lines. So they're going to push whatever they're over back that much farther. And I think it's just across the bottom. Okay, no, I decide to go with that cruciform composition and accentuate it and go all the way up to the top. And I really like that. Yes, I could have went horizontally, but for some reason I chose this. And there's that piece right in the middle I don't, I think I put it lower just because I didn't want my nice um, circles being covered. It's just too much of a distraction. That's too much up there. It's needing the weight below and it's needing a smaller piece overlapping. Okay, all right then. Oh, so this is what happens. I end up putting that on the bottom first and then a smaller piece of the orange, yellow, and pink uh, tracing paper on top, just to create some more overlapping. Yes, and we, uh, when we want to rush, and I don't want to use the hair dryer all the time, we can mess up a layer if it hasn't dried, but uh, that's okay. And yes, so it needs to go up on the higher plane above, and it found its spot on the page. So now we have definitely more structure. 
I'm liking that those letters are being covered up a bit so they're not like right in your face. Um, carrying on those dots in the bottom from that collage piece in the lower left hand corner. And there's one more row of something that I put in with my finger after I use this. So this is like a high tech. Um, I think I had, had a question about this stencil uh, from a subscriber in the last video. And um, like I said, our art stores up here in Ontario are Curry's Art Store. And of course, I, I'm ordering some more stencils on Amazon, but I've not seen this one too in too many places. It's just really techy, you know, the inside, and it just sort of puts that message across. Very angular, and I'm really liking that, how those letters are pushed back now. But very, see, I'm <laughs> very busy, too busy. So I'm thinking, okay, how can I calm down this page? Where does it need to be calmed down? So I would say at the bottom, maybe beside the pink. So I'm just, before I'm going to put that layer, I dry it so nothing gets smudged because I'm liking the way it is. And then I decide to just unify everything, calm things down a little bit with some ultramarine blue. And I'm really liking how it sits next to that fuchsia, orange, and yellow. Adding a little bl uh, black just to take out the power of that particular blue neutralizing it a little bit. Of course, you know, adding black to any color will just um, affect the shade of it, the lightness and darkness. And then it's just going around those circles, again, calming down that pink a little bit. So covering up what you don't want makes what you do like pop out all, all the more. So I showed you and I thought, okay, I'm liking what's happening, but I don't want to use the same blue. So manganese blue, if you, if you haven't used it before, is so transparent. And see how that is just giving more weight to the bottom? Um, I just wanted to lift. I didn't want too much of that lighter tone on that collage paper in the lower left to disappear. And now... The upper half is showing much, much better. So I'm deciding what I need. And what I need is a vertical row of seven circles. And then I realize, well, you know what? I really and usually I'll remember my dots, just carrying the eye. So these are the last layers, your last little details. And I'm being careful, and I know it's a busy enough piece, but it just turned out that way. And adding the pink within the white circles just made the eye go there a bit more. So you're noticing them a bit more. And then orange, bringing out that orange of that piece, just with a few vertical dashes. And of course, my blue. So I didn't think circles. I thought, okay, what's different from what I have? Some horizontal lines going across. And I'm thinking in threes, and if I'm not gonna, if I'm gonna go more than three, I'm gonna go five. I just do that. And making sure that this layer is nice and dry. While I'm doing that, I notice that those would be better if they were just a little lighter, plus the two on the pink. Perfect. Okay. So 
In the end, I don't know if you recognize what this shape might be. Um, it's a cross in a way, in a way, but it really reminds me of something. So I don't know if some of you know about this. Um, it's, uh, it has to do with genetics. So uh, we could just play a little game. If any of you recognize the shape, let me know in the comments. It is so cool. So yes, using that hair dryer on the tape before I remove it is really helping, but also having a layer of gesso on the paper first. So a very bold um, piece came through the ugly purple layers and oh I'm just it just needs that little bit the transition between those two sections and oh I'm not done yet oh I'm writing so I'm just writing exploring color and the date just so I remember so if you enjoyed this one please let me know don't forget to subscribe like and share and more to come and I will see you in the next video.